The Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question without notice is to the Prime Minister. Will the Prime Minister please tell for the record the whole story of the Kirribilli House conspiracy? Why were Sir Peter Ables and Bill Kelty in attendance? Exactly what promises did the Prime Minister make to the member for Blacksland? Exactly what promises did the member for Blacksland make to the Prime Minister? What promises did both make to the union boss and the millionaire businessman who were their chosen seconds? And are there any other aspects of the deal yet to be revealed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable the Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to answer this question, which I, of course, totally expected from the Leader of the Opposition, in a way which... Uh, Order. The member for Forrest will cease interjecting. In a way which is as least hurtful uh, uh, to the member for Blacksland and myself. And, 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 and let me finish, and our relationship. It is inevitable, Mr Speaker, it is inevitable in uh, uh, retailing these events uh, that there will be hurt. And I simply say by way of preface that I want to go to this in, in the matter when, in the way which is as least uh, hurtful as possible. The fact is that uh, during uh, the previous term of government, the member for Blacksland uh, believed uh, that uh, he should have a uh, turn as Prime Minister in that term. And uh, we can't have it in that term, that one's passed. We're into a new one as we will be in a new one after 1993. And uh, Mr uh, Speaker, that was his view. Order. I understood it. And uh, there was uh, some pressure put upon me uh, by uh, the uh, member for Blacksland. He had the view that it was either impossible or extraordinarily difficult uh, to win uh, the 1990 election. I didn't uh, share that view. I believed uh, that uh, under my leadership uh, we would win uh, what uh, would be a uh, very difficult election, but I believe we would win it. I may say parenthetically, Mr Speaker, it was a view not shared by, I think, even the majority of my own colleagues. It was nevertheless one which I held profoundly I believed uh, it was a very necessary election to win because I believed that it was in the interest of this government that they could, should continue to be governed by a Labor government and uh, not uh, by a Tory coalition of the Liberal and National Party. It was my hope, uh, Mr Speaker, it was my profound hope uh, that the member for Blacksland uh, would uh, remain with me uh, as uh, the Treasurer uh, in the lead up to and in the fighting of that election and in the winning of it. He had a view that uh, perhaps he uh, may uh, not uh, wish to stay and it was in that context uh, the discussions took place uh, before uh, the uh, meeting at Kirribilli. There had been discussions with him. He had discussions uh, with others and out of those uh, discussions uh, four mutual friends uh, met uh, at uh, Kirribilli. I have not attempted uh, at any point, uh, Mr Speaker, at any point uh, either to deny the fact of that meeting, nor have I attempted at any point to deny the fact that uh, in the situation that I desperately wanted uh, the member for Blacksland uh, to stay as part of that team, to maximise our chance of winning that tough election, uh, that uh, in those circumstances I gave the undertaking uh, uh, to which reference has been made, uh, that I would stand aside for him uh, during the next term if we won that election. I've not at any stage uh, attempted uh, to deny that fact. I must say, uh, Mr. S well, well, Mr. Speaker, no, I have neither attempted to deny it or in any uh, sense, uh, uh, or in any sense, uh, qualify it. Order, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. I'm saying that since this matter has arisen, I've not attempted to deny that fact. Since, well, I've, Mr. Speaker, it was the decision. Mr. Speaker, it was the Order. decision. It was the decision of the member for Blacksland uh, to uh, reveal uh, uh, that uh, secret meeting, and uh, that's his decision. I'm not complaining about it. He's made it. I'm simply saying, I'm simply saying, Mr. Speaker, that since he has revealed that meeting in that period, I have not made any attempt uh, to deny that fact. That's what my comments are directed to. Well, Mr Speaker, Mr Order. Speaker, either, either the Leader Order. of the Opposition wants his full answer or he doesn't. And he'll get it, and he'll get it uh, quite directly from me, and it's not going to be assisted in any way 
uh, by uh, uh, this uh, series of interjections. Now, Mr. Speaker, I was reluctant, as I have said, I was reluctant to give that undertaking to the member for Blacksland. I was reluctant to, to do it because I had uh, then the uh, profound belief uh, that I would continue to be the one best able to uh, lead this uh, government uh, to victory. And uh, when I gave uh, the commitment, I must say that uh, I hope that as uh, time went on during the, the next term that uh, he may come to understand that. But I'm not in any sense saying that that uh, commitment wasn't given, but importantly it was intended. That unfortunately, Mr Speaker, and I do not resolve from this fact, that unfortunately uh, put me in a situation where uh, I had to, in the 1990 election, where it was understood, where it was understood, including by those at the Kirribilli meeting, that it would be fatal to go into the election saying that I would stand aside because the election was all... Well, let me... Look, Mr Speaker, I am not going to avoid anything. I, I, I assume that the Leader of the Opposition wants a full answer to his question. I'm attempting to give it. And I would suggest if he regards the question as serious and he wants the answer, I should be permitted to give it without all this uh, stupid interjection. Now, Mr Speaker, the election was already being run in terms Order. of a vote, uh, a vote for Hawke is a vote for Keating. Now, uh, Mr uh, Speaker, it was accepted as politically suicidal uh, if uh, that was the case. Now, Mr Speaker, Mr Order. Speaker, it was agreed. Mr Speaker, Mr Order. Speaker, it was agreed. It was agreed at the uh, meeting at Kirribilli uh, that uh, no reference would be made to this fact and for that obvious reason. I have said, Mr Speaker, and I repeat in this House, I repeat in this House, that it was a matter of deep regret to me that those political realities uh, forced me into that situation. The existing... Mr. The member for Macmillan will cease interjecting. Mr Speaker, as I say, I deeply regret, I say it here, I've said it outside, I deeply regret uh, that uh, that situation was forced by the political realities. The political reality that we've got now, the political reality we've got now, uh, Mr Speaker, is that in fact, uh, I will uh, lead this party during the full term of this government and I believe and I believe that just as I was confident I believe that just as I was confident in 1987 against the odds that I would lead the Labor government to victory in 87 as I did and just as I believed in 1990 that I would lead the Labor government to victory I am confident that I will do so again in 1993. Mr Speaker, Mr. S Mr. Speaker Mr Speaker, Order. Mr. S Mr. Speaker uh, I wouldn't think that the member for Kuyong should get on his... Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr Speaker, we do see that this is indeed a very self-interested question. Order. A very self-interested question indeed. Order. Now, the member for Coronella will cease interjecting. Now, the member for Kuyong will cease interjecting. The Prime Minister uh, will be heard. Now, Mr Speaker, the uh, latter part of the Honourable Leader of the Opposition's question related, uh, uh, and it was put in these, uh, these terms of the union boss and the millionaire businessman. Well, uh, neither the member for Blacksland nor myself make any apology uh, for our friendship with the two people in question. As far as, well, I, I know, uh, I haven't been able recently to talk for the member for Blacksland on everything, but I know without any hesitation that I speak for him when I say that neither the member for Blacksland nor myself make any apology for the fact of our friendship uh, with Bill Kelty and Sir Peter Abels. They have, uh, they have uh, both been friends of ours for a considerable period of time, and I make no apology for that friendship. And the I am not going to be uh, uh, moved in any way in asserting that friendship as I have before in this place or in the parliament. I'm not going to be diverted in any way by uh, the denigratory terms attached to Kilty on the one hand of union boss or uh, millionaire businessman on the other hand of Sir Peter Abels. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I uh, uh, will uh, have it uh, quite openly known who my friends are. I apologise uh, for none of them. And uh, as I've said before, uh, uh, where uh, there's any suggestion of misdoing, if uh, there is any, let the cards fall where they may. But as far as I'm concerned, if I have a friend, I will not retreat from that friendship. Now, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, 
Mr. Speaker, the Honourable... The member for more... Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition has uh, asked whether there was uh, some uh, uh, secret agenda or secret deal. The answer is no. Oh. That is any, any additional... Order, Mr. Speaker, he asked if there was any additional, any additional matter, any additional secret agenda. The answer is no. The